Always, dude. What's happening, everyone? We are here with Jay at Top Dogs Fitness, where we are going to go through some. We haven't found out yet. He's going to teach us about your feet, your body, your hips, your psoas muscles, your shoulders, traps, you name it. What else? Oh man, so much, so much. Uh, this is something I've been doing for like 10 years now. I taught myself how to fix myself and I want to teach you how to fix yourselves too. I see for now, we just go like top down. Okay. Tell us kind of what we should be doing, what okay. athletes should be doing specifically as far as from a mobility standpoint, okay. warm ups, during workouts, for workouts, like you have a ton of knowledge. I think there's just an opportunity here for people to learn a shit ton of information. Yeah, and even more to come. I believe that uh, the feet are one of the most important things when it comes to uh, training, when it comes to athletes, when it comes to everything. So for example, look at my feet for example. Mm -hmm. Like I have relative flat feet, right? Mm -hmm. And he has a nice arch. So if you look at my foot, the way that to test that at home is to put two fingers underneath. If you can see that first tick there, yeah. then you definitely have flat feet, right? Yeah. It's, it's apparent in me because my ankle's going in. Yeah. Right? It's caught, it's diving in where yours, check that out. Yeah. Boom. I can't see that, it goes right underneath. So it's an easy indicator of whether you got you know, flat feet or arched feet. Now, it's, it's actually proven now that whether you have flat feet or arched feet, it doesn't actually change too much. Like LeBron has flat feet, relatively. I've seen his feet, they're the most hideous things I've ever seen. But <laughs> it's really fascinating. But um, So his foot and my feet, as athletes, it's, it's, it's interesting, right? Because I always thought flat feet were detriment, but flat feet are actually a hip issue, but we'll dive into that a little bit later. But right now I want to talk about the feet itself. Okay, so this big toe, my feet are, my, my big toe is straight. His is, see that one? How it's kind of going a little bit that way. Yeah, that one, that. a little bit, like they're not, bro, some people I see going like this. Oh. Some people are doing this. Like I know, I, I know women literally that are like that. Wow, yeah, because they're wearing pointed shoes. Right. Yeah, and that's crushing it. And then the nervous system adapted, right. and we think, oh, my feet suck. No, your body's amazing. Your body adapted to, to conform to what you wanted to do. First of all, the mobility of them, right? So foot mobility, I love this reference, okay? Imagine I put my hand in a glove. Just imagine that for a second. Put it, your hand in a glove. Do that for 20 years, 30 years, right? What'll happen to your hands? They'll atrophy. You won't be able to play guitar. You won't be able to do anything intrinsic because your, all your muscles will be atrophied, right? Then what? Your wrist. Because you're not getting full range of motion, it'll start to lock. You're gonna have a limited range of motion, which is then gonna mess up your forearm. Then you're gonna have massive calf, more forearms, just like calf issues. Right. Then That's you're gonna have. Say for babies not to put shoes on them so they develop problems. My Tom Adam, who I talked about. Yes. You advocate he never has shoes on his kid. Dude, I will not put shoes on my kid, even when they're adults. I'm gonna get them some toe shoes. Uh, I'm gonna show you something real quick. It's a prototype for my future design of a shoe, but look how flexible that is. Right? I have toe shoes that I wear. I've been wearing them for seven to eight years. I actually play basketball in these type of shoes now where I thought Achilles would damage or whatever. No, but a heel drop, if you could develop actual strength with, with feet because your foot is designed to do this, it's not designed to be, and I like Converse, but it's not designed to be like, like stiff. Converse is actually good for training for the most part, but uh, I still like the ability for big toe to be able to push off, right? And uh, flexibility is super, super important, but Okay, so that's just the intrinsic muscles of the feet, the bottom of the foot, which remember the fascia, have you ever heard of somebody that has plantar fasciitis? What does plantar fasciitis mean? It just means, fasciitis means the fascia is inflamed. That's what fasciitis means. Itis just means inflammation. So plantar fasciitis just means the fascia on the bottom of the feet is inflamed. Okay, what does that mean? And how does that happen? And where does that fascia come from? This thing I'm gonna show you, uh, you can touch your toes, right? Yeah. How far can you bend? Pretty flexible. <laughs> Oh, you're good. And does any of you guys have a limited range of motion with touching? Come on over. So we can do this now or we can do it later. I think right now it would be really important. If you yeah. don't mind taking off one of your shoes or at least just showing me what you need. <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, no, I hope I can. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I, I can. I definitely can. Let me see. This is going to be great. I, I don't want, I hope you don't, honestly. Yes. Okay. This is going to be, this is going to be amazing. Okay. So. How many of you believe that I can actually address and get him to touch his toes just using this thing? I don't either. <laughs> he believes it. You want to believe it? Most, when I did this in front of a school of like 30 kids, they're like, nah, nah, nah. And if you do, I'll pay attention for the rest of the class. I'm like, bet. Yeah. We're doing it, okay? So I want you to this, just simply just go like this. Go on your heel, left and right. Yeah. 
All right, so I'll teach you guys to do this when you're at home or whatever. Uh, it's super simple, left and right. You're gonna feel bubble wrap. And that's right. what you wanna feel. Okay. Pop, 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 pop. I do okay. have both feet here? Yeah, yeah, but I want you to do just one. Now, most people think when it comes to plantar fascia, uh, it's just the foot. It's actually not. The Achilles tendon, this thing back here, right? The Achilles tendon actually turns into the plantar fascia. Right? And that's, that's literally what it is. And I have it on the image over there. We'll show it to you in a second. But the calf muscle turns into the fascia on the bottom of the foot. And if you have rigidity in the foot, just like I talked about with the hand, if you've got rigidity here, it's going to go all the way up the system. So same thing happening there. When you have rigidity in the foot, it's going to mess up this whole area because all the tendons from the foot come from here. Right? Now, when it comes to arching, here's me with the valgus knees. We call it valgus because the knees go in. Right? So this is what happens when the feet are flat, boom, the knees go in, the glute med muscle, glute min muscle kind of turns off in a sense, or it becomes inhibited because it gets stretched to a certain degree. And once that happens, you lose glute activation through running, and every time you jump, you're going to have a slight inward towards those knees. That's why I have so many people, MCL damage, uh, you know, all meniscus issues. That's why issues. they say to keep your knees out when you're squatting. Right. So, so if you notice, before I even get into this, like, watch, so here's a flat foot, right? Soon as I push the floor as if there's a carpet like this and it's lifted a little bit, as if I grab it and I pull it apart. Mm. Like not just that, I pull the, the, the ground apart. When I pull the ground apart, see what happened to my feet? Right off the hop. My flat feet, as soon as I pull the ground apart, boom, my arch is just lifted. Mm. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going on to my outside toes. That's, a, that's the thing, right? I'm actually just going, boom. It's more for this. Loading, yeah, getting Loading. fired up. That's it. As soon as you load that, and if you don't have that capacity or the ability to do that, you can train it. Gotcha. Right? And I love that. I get so many people to do this. Whether you're a six-year-old woman, whether you're a 10-year-old boy, and you don't have that, just do this. And it just, it just prompts the nervous system to activate those muscles. Right. Right? So super, super, super cool. I actually load that up out there on the machine, and I do like heavy. Right. And, I, and I go forward, and then I'll lean back a little bit, and then I'll go way back just to get those muscles on. Right. So many people don't train those side yeah. glute muscles, right? Glute min, glute, uh, glute med. These things, you just slide them in between your toes just to create that space. You can do it with your hands when you're watching TV too. You just stick your hands through your fingers and move your toes around just to create mobility in the joints. Mm. That's it, it doesn't have to be crazy, right? It doesn't have to be all that, but that's how you can train. And I would do it for like an hour. You can do it an hour a day for a while. It might hurt because your feet are so used to being so close together. Yeah. But when you start wearing those, it should be fine. So that's just the feet, and we haven't even gone up the system yet. Mm -hmm. So one thing I want to test would be this balancer, right? A lot of people talk about balance, and they say, oh, I don't have any good balance. Well, do we ever train balance? Because you can train balance. You don't have to just say, um, I don't have balance, right? So, so try it out. Like I'll, 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 you can do it yourself, or I can yeah, give you a quick demo. So I'll give you a quick demo. So here's my right foot. I'll start like this. Right? It's, it's not a trick of like how long can you do it for, it's just a test. And if you can stay on for as long as you can, then you have pretty decent balance. But if I move forward, say I try my left foot, same thing. So see my left side is a little bit compromised? A little bit, but at least I can stay on, right? Now this is actually a training system for the bottom of the feet. This is actually how I train my feet. So I use this and I, and I create that, and it actually activates the glute with the foot. It creates that connection to the brain. And super, super, super important. So try it out. Right. So right foot first. Yeah. To, to yeah. Try, try like maybe putting the, the bar in between big toe yeah. and that. Maybe just seeing where, where you feel more comfortable. I like that there. Yep. Try even squeezing that right butt cheek a little bit. Maybe it'll add a little bit of. And then forward. Yep. One simple tip. Look at one spot. If you just stare at one spot, it really helps. Nice. Now this will tell you like, oh, is the knee kind of caving? Now when I do my assessments, I check sometimes when he's doing that, is the knee caving inward? Does it translate out? What's happening here? Is there like a lot of dipping happening? You can tell a lot, but just, and he has great balance. You should see people when they don't have any balance, this thing is like flying. <laughs> it's funny. See how far he went. So he just did basically one foot. Right foot. Right foot. So he just touched his foot. <laughs> So you touch just by doing one foot. That's not even doing two feet. That's by one foot. That's what happens when you reduce the, the, tension, the tension on the fascia on the bottom of the feet. He's touching. That's not, that's not a magic trick. That's literally he just did that within a minute, two minutes. Okay, so now he does two feet. So now he does, he does two feet. Bam. Solved the problem. Why is that? 
Because everything that happens when it comes to locking of a nervous system happens in the brain and the nervous system. It doesn't happen in the foot. Most of our issues in our bodies are locking of the nervous system. It has nothing to do with the actual spot of pain. That's why as a therapist, if you see any therapist that you know that's going towards the spot of pain, a lot of the times they're, they might be misdirected. Especially if you have a relative flat foot, that inner part of the foot is gonna be so like, just damaged, right? And I think it's a, oh man, you can use a golf ball, you can use a baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Like yep. like right. Okay. Try it out now. I think it's enough time. Demo number two, probably like curl into a pretzel at this point. <laughs> yeah, underneath his he's feet. A, yeah. So is there, are you are, are your legs completely straight? Okay, that's, that's, that's the even more important to know. Why is range of motion so important? Because let's say he bent down with lack of range of motion. So if I bend down and I'm only going to here, but the ball is there and I go, bam, micro tear, micro tear, micro tear, micro tear. And especially if you have valgus knees, micro tear, micro tear, not just tearing the muscle, then you're tearing the ligaments and the tendons and everything over time. Then all of a sudden, what happened to me like three years ago, I was going for a pass in basketball, my knee just kept going. So I heard a and I was like, what, what is that? It's just because I was wearing clunky shoes, my ankles was, it's a whole other conversation. Like IT band, by the way, needs 2,000 pounds to change it one millimeter. So you cannot address or change IT band through fascial, it doesn't matter how much you roll on it, it doesn't change it. What you're really doing and why it feels good is because vastus lateralis, which is the largest quad muscle, is the biggest muscle in the quad. So when you're rolling it out, the metabolites, all this thing, I don't know the science behind yeah, it, but it's, it's that, releasing that. That's it, and you're, and you're getting the blood flowing, and that's it. Right, so it's not the fascia, the actual, what, what, what changes that, which is a fascial, fascial tension regulator, just like the Achilles tendon is a tension regulator of the calf, the IT band is a tension regulator of the, of the hip as well. So when you have an anterior pelvic tilt, it's gonna start tugging, either tugging it this way, or it's, it's gonna change the knee at some level, it's gonna start pulling that whole side, whatever. Yeah. So it's all about the hip when it comes to, TF, uh, when it comes to uh, the IT band, and the TFL, that's where it comes from, which is the, called the tensor fascial lata which I don't hear anybody talk about. Yeah, I definitely have an interior pelvic. Right, yeah, on this thing, there are so many exercises you can do, like tons of exercises. There's actually games you can play with people. Uh, I actually bought this separately from, from a store and I bought these things from another store. I could show you where I get them from. But uh, this thing you can have at home and it's basically like, that's how I, I start my mornings, is I just go on and balance. It primes the nervous system. It's a form of meditation as well because you could kind of really work on your own balance. And then you can get a friend eventually and you guys can start playing. You can look at each other's eyes. You can kind of like test things. You can throw a ball at the person and it just, you keep going with that, right? When, when you go in and you say knee injuries or knee pain, a lot of the times therapists go to the knee. Right. Most of the time, right? So most of the time they'll say, look, I, I damaged the inside. So I was trying to think, okay, maybe quad. Maybe do treatment for my quad. Maybe treatment for my hamstring. Treatment for that. Nothing worked. It took me a year, like it took me like a year to finally realize that it has nothing to do with my knee. It had everything to do with my hip. Okay. Now the reason I said that, remember I said spread the floor. So when I spread the floor, it turns on glute med, activates the knee. As soon as the foot caves in, whoosh, the knees go in. You're going to have damage to that knee. Yeah. See that rotation that happened? The amount of rotation that happens there, it's significant, right? And most people have this issue when they jump, the knees naturally go in. Even if they look like they have good posture, when they jump, their knees will cave a little bit and jump. But you can actually train that, okay? So the cue for people when they're squatting, for instance, at home, I think this is where I'm trying to apply it for a daily average human. Yeah. Would be to make sure that before you get into your squat, you're bracing, you're grabbing, and then mm -hmm. you're splitting the ground apart yep. prior to going down. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I do not, I will never wear shoes like this. No offense to the camera guy that brought the shoes in. <laughs> but I personally, like I wear them for style, even for style. I can't wear it like uh, for style, sure, but even for like day-to-day -day use, I won't use them anymore because of the amount of knee issues that I've had and like low back pain as a result of wearing these type of shoes. Now I can explain that in a very interesting way, but I might make Nike out of business and it's a fascinating conspiracy theory that, that the feet, you know, I call it a shoe spiracy because it kind of is. Um, so watch this. As soon as my feet are like this on the side, if I'm wearing any form of elevation, I'm not talking about those, I'm talking any shoes, like any, any. Yeah, and then I'm lifted like this, I cannot walk like that. So my body has to adapt. So I can't be leaning forward, so what does it do? Tilts. Tilts, and then you end up ending up with some slouching, right? Or it'll like conform to something like this. And then you're at, it's just, it just, it's so messed up. So the reason I like heel flat, 
If you notice that people that can't squat properly, what we do with people that can't squat, we get them to squat and they drop down to here and then they fall back. That has nothing to do with usually with anything other than the ankles. Okay, and if the ankles are locked in this position, right, that means the calf muscle is just locked in a, in a, in a almost like a compressed state. Yeah. So when it's, when it's in a compressed state like that, I mean, you're not really gonna get, like you ha your ankle has to be full range of motion to the ground, allowing you to go here. But the more you wear those type of shoes, the heel elevation, you're locking the ankle. Just it's like if I kept my, my forearm like this for all day long. This muscles will be elongated and weakened because they're elongated. This is going to be shortened and weakened because they're shortened. So these are the type of shoes. Now, the reason I like these because I grew up without a lot of money, so I couldn't afford uh, really heavy shoes. But if you go look for barefoot shoes right now online, anywhere you look, 200 bucks, 150 minimum, 100 bucks for the worst one. 100 bucks, right? That's not what I want to do. I want to make a shoe that's like $30, $40, $50, because I believe everybody should be wearing this. And if we cared about people, we'd be putting people in the proper type of footwear, because this is more natural for your feet, just like you don't wear shoes on your hands. It doesn't make any sense. So uh, these things, I wear them uh, every single day, uh, how I work. Now, these are not attractive. I understand that. They're not the most, that's why I'm trying to design my own style that actually looks good, that people can actually like and be confident wearing. But these are on Amazon for 30 bucks. Wow. And that's why I love them so much because I bought four pairs and I've been testing them all out and trying them all out. Now I wear them with socks, but the idea is full range of motion, uh, functionality. And uh, like I said, I actually play basketball with these type of shoes now. And I never thought I could, but my, my ability to be like on balance, like when I come around for the turn, I have way more balance. And now my cutting is like, whoa, whoa, and I feel like I just have way more, more control of my feet which is so important. When I used to bend up, check this out, this is one of the most important things I can ever teach you about the feet, is when I lift up, if you notice, when I go up, I'm not going out. So at home, if you wanna try this in the mirror, try it out, but I'm gonna go up and out. That's how most people do it. But when you really have good big toe activation, you'll go up straight. Okay, and now most people, when they're walking or running, they're actually going like that. Their ankles are going outward. So no wonder we're having Oh, my ankle hurts. Oh, my knee hurts. Oh, my low back hurts. Because the stability at the basis, the basic foundation of what we walk on is compromised. Uh, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. What is the camera like? Let me see. Okay, so what I, let's go up. So what I look for here is everything is in line, right? Yep. Yep. Now do it like, do it the bad way that I was kind of showing. Like almost go on to your other, yeah. That's what I see more of. I see that all the time. Almost everybody that has knee issues, ankle, low back, they do this, but to a certain degree, they might not do it as accentuated, but, but you know what I'm saying? Like, and then some people, when they even do this, they'll start noticing cramping in their foot right here in the inside of the arch. They'll start noticing a cramp as soon as they get up onto that toe because their body's like, oh, whoa, you don't do that usually, man. Like go back to where you usually do it. You know what I mean? So the body's trying to tell us whatever we do to our body, it will help us do.